Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today, I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto was neglected and broken and became a daimyo. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over in the other channels. Yes. I need a four channels that I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the Enemy King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new so I can welcome you personally guys. So without further ado or wasting any more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys. So the last time we left off, because of the fox chakra infecting young Naruto before, the beast was sealed inside of him. Naruto's leg was pretty much useless. He grew up, not able to use his leg. For his entire life he was in a wheelchair and that made things much worse because he could not run away when the villagers decided to take their anger out on him. His life had not been a good one. It wasn't good at all. He wanted to find a way. That is when he came across Funjutsu by accident. The fox inside of his stomach and he more friends from day one. It was just something that he knew from day one. As the fox was always there for him no matter what. When Naruto came across Funjutsu he found something out. Something that might be his way of getting out of all of this. It might be the way he thought. So he dive into it for years he studied until the day finally came. Hiruzen did not check up on Naruto that much as he was always busy neglecting his duties that he told Kushina that he'd watch over Naruto and make sure he was safe. As Naruto finally did it, he connected the Funjutsu marker to his leg and one to his palm so he was able to control his body. As he walked to the office, Hiruzen was shocked when he saw him. However, right there and then he broke the trust that Naruto had in him. No, he said. He forbade Naruto from ever becoming a ninja. There was just no way that he could. Naruto was broken. As he left, he went home as he felt empty, not knowing what to do. The fox's words of not giving up hit him though. As Naruto pulled his pile of clothing together and did something, using Funjutsu and some of the fox chakras, he created something. He created a creature, humanoid, made from his clothing and a chakra. It was strange, yet it bowed to him and called him master. As Naruto started testing out, it was strong, incredibly so, but he did not know how to control that monster strength of his. Fast and quick. As Naruto was able to give it a skeleton or system by allowing it to carve one out of a tree. Kurama told Naruto that he should get away from this place. As he didn't know it yet but he hated this place. And Naruto realized he was right so he was going to become something greater than a ninja. Something far better. His creation now named Deku made its way towards the land of wave. The place that Naruto saw is fitting. For a leader, Deku got there as he ran into Zabuza and his apprentice. They did not stand a chance as Deku was able to take them down, but he did not kill them. Deku did not have sympathy or anything, but his master might be in need for them. Deku then killed both the daimyo and Gato, seeing that the daimyo had been the one to sell out his own country for money. 
But God will use that information against him. So now, he told the people what they had to do and that his master would come soon. The real Naruto was drawing as he was back at the village when Hinata came across him. As she saw him by himself just drawing, the details in his drawing was amazing. As Naruto found her curious, her being the daughter of the clan head, she was also now a ninja as Deku had watched over her many of them. He told Naruto that she was lacking in fighting spirit, she was too soft. However, she may be useful. As the real Deku had came back, informing Naruto of everything, and his plans were going well, Naruto even fixed his wheelchair to make it even hover with Wind Chakra. He was becoming something entirely different, and he was going to prove to the old man that he was wrong, that he was dead wrong, that he would not be something greater than he was right now. He will make them see. He will make them all see. So yeah guys, basically let's play Toffee Gas game. Switch across the place to face up. So what do you say we jump right into this? Begin now guys. Deku arrive as he bow in front of Naruto. There has been a small hitch to the plans Naruto-sama. And that is, said Naruto. I was on my way out of the village when I saw two Genin teams assemble at the gate. How is that a problem, said Naruto. With them is a bridge builder that came to this village months ago to seek aid. Their function is to protect him against anyone that Gato sends to kill him. But he did not tell them that. The mission is ranked as a C, not a A. The people of Wave have been sending him message to come back, but he think it's a trap from Gato. As Naruto raised Ibrun at that, which Genin teams are on his protection he asks. Team 7 consisting of their squad leader Kakashi Hatake. His Genins are Sasuke Uchiha, Haruna Sakura and Sai. As Naruto spoke up, the pale, nameless Genin boy who appear right after the graduation. He is not on the reserve Genin list, or Konoha citizen log, or even the immigration list. I suspect that he works for a higher power. Send a clone to find out everything about him. If he's not a threat, he should report back. Deku snapped his fingers as the Shida clone appeared right beside him. It saluted to both of them before, blurring out of the apartment. As Deku continued, Team 10 consisting of their squad leader, Sarutobe Asuma, and his Jennings, Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akimichi, and Shikamaru Nara. Hearing the last name Naruto scowl, a Nara, precisely Naruto sama. Should I dispatch of him in wave? No, if he dies in foreign territory, it would seem as an act of war. Wave would be destroyed before it could raise any sort of defense. What is the mental condition of the people of Wave? Most are still suffering from trauma from the critical ruling and others are recovering from critical malnourishment. What have you done about it, said Naruto. I have made transform water clones to speak to those with the trauma, for them to vent out their feelings. It took a while for them to become familiarized with them, but now they're fully expressing themselves. The cure will have to do until we are able to recruit a psychologist to the country. Numerous clones have also been sent outside to gather for the hungry, while the farms that we plant are growing fast, might I add, and the animals are still breeding. As Naruto listened all of that, he was not in a rush to send Deku out because he was sure that the team with Tazuna would be going at a civilian pace. Excellent. I want you to go back to Wave as soon as possible and spy on the security details. If they get past the borders, try and scare them off. If they still resist, allow them passage and keep on spying on them. But if they get too nosy, stop them. And use a bit of force if you have to. Yes, Naruto sama. Deku said. Time skip. Curious. Thought one Kakashi Hatake. As he was walking, as he noticed a puddle of water alongside his fellow Jonin, Sartobi Asuma, who was calmly walking as well, as the both of them traded signals of the incoming attack. None of the other Jennings besides Sai and Sasuke noticed the non-verbal conversation 
until they pass a puddle and they emerge. Clash. One down. Asuma Sensei the Genin scream as the two ninjas rip Asuma apart. They went after Kakashi and caught him as well. Two down. Kakashi Sensei Tazuna cursed as he hid behind the two shouting females of the group. While Sasuke and Sai ran towards the demon brothers throwing kunais towards them. The kunai interlocked the chain forcing the demon brothers to break apart. Sasuke seemed to have overestimated his taijutsu as he was forced to dodge multiple strikes from that claw that was dripping with poison while Sai was doing well enough as he parried and blocked the attack with his tonto that he carried on his back. Out of nowhere a massive bouncing ball of flesh landed on the chunin that Sasuke was facing and the other one that Sai was facing completely froze up. Shadow possession, success. Shikamaru said, both senseis jumped down from the tree as they were unharmed. Well done both of you, Asuma said. Sensei, you're alive. Both girls shouted out at seeing their senseis with their eyes. Yeah, good work. Now relax as I interrogate these two. As he dragged both brothers away, the one that was flattened by Choji, meat tank, and the other one that was immobilized by Shikamaru. Shadow Possession Jutsu as he tied them up. Who do you work for he asked. The one that was still conscious spat. We're not talking he said. Oh well I tried. As he pulled out a kunai he was about to stab the chunin in the arm but he had to turn and catch a quick fist that was coming towards him. Who are you? The person simply hummed before he pulled his fist back as he threw a smoke bomb. Shit Kekashi said as he could not see through the smoke. However, as he got through, both demon brothers and the mysterious attacker disappeared. Kakashi, any problem? Sir Toby called out. As Asuma had remained in the clearing as Kakashi had dragged the demon brothers away. Kakashi cursed as he stomped out of the forest. He stopped a few feet away from Tazuna. Yes, I believe that Tazuna here has some explaining to do. What do you mean Sensei? Sakura asked. I mean, why would two Chunin ninjas ambush us on the way to Wave Country? And someone just appeared and got them and got away. Well, go on, said Kakashi, giving the man a frightening stare with his one eye. As Tazuna stood strong against the glare, as Asuma turned his wrath upon him as well, just from the looks from the two Jonins, he melted. As he started to confess to everything, telling them the true reason, Telling them why the attack happened. That's it. We're going back to Kanoha, Kakashi said. Well, I am going to wave, Sensei, Sasuke said with a grunt as he crossed his arms. I am not going to have any unfinished missions in my record, he said. I'm going to, Ino and Sakura squeal. What of you, Shikamaru? Do you want to go? It will be too troublesome, but whatever. Yeah, whatever, Choji said. As Asuma sighed. We'll send the messenger hawk back to Kanoha and tell the Hokage what happened. Maybe he will send reinforcements if possible. With all of them coming to the same conclusion, they headed off towards the land of wave. Time skip. Deku looked over the lone conscious demon brother. You failed your mission, he said. From his right arm, a stake came out as he held onto it. What do you have to say for yourself? We're sorry Deku-sama, we were outnumbered and outgunned. Then why didn't you retreat and give a status report to Zabuza? Deku said coldly as he raised the stake arm. As he looked at the carving of the wood, the demon brother began to shake. We just want to see if we could pick them off. We thought we had killed the copy ninja and the other Jonins. We're sorry Deku-sama. Deku narrowed his eyes down at them before he lowered his arm. Remember who you work for and next time think with your head before you go for the kill. Do I make myself clear? The Chunin nodded frantically. Get out of my sight. The Chunin picked his brother up and rushed towards Wave Country where they will get medical treatment. It was his master's plan to recruit the demon brothers into his personal army and offer them a sanctuary and when they got Wave Economy up. Payment 
The brothers were the only ones that Naruto had hired. As Deku retracted his stick, as he went towards the forest, making his way, as he appeared behind Zabuza, he had to duck as Zabuza swiped behind him. When the missing in saw who it was, he stand down. What's the problem? The dark one straightened up. Kanoha ninjas are on the way. My master said that we should. Dissuade their progress as much as possible. And if it cannot be helped, we should retreat and allow them through. He turned as he glanced over towards Haku, the mass hunter. You are to provide support when it cannot be helped. The boy nodded as he fixed his mask. He then sprang into a tree and hid himself. They should be here in a few minutes. Wait for my signal. With those parting words, Deku was gone. Zabuza shivered. That guy gave me the heebie-jeebies. As Haku giggled from his perch. Me too, he said. Around 10 minutes later, he heard a bird call. The signal that the Kanoha ninjas were there. Showtime, kid, he said. As he swung his blade towards the ninjas. Everyone duck! The voice of Kakashi called out. As the ninjas and the clients were brought to their knees. Kakashi glanced up as he saw the man on the blade. Zabuza Mamakai. The demon of the hidden mist. Zabuza chuckled darkly. Sending fear down the genuine spines. I see my reputation precedes me. Sharingan no Kakashi. Sasuke snapped his head towards the team sensei. Sharingan? We'll talk about it later. As Kakashi looked up towards the man. Zabuza jumped down bringing his blade down as well. I guess you're here to assassinate Tazuna san It wasn't a question, more like a statement. You could say that. He leaned on his weapon as another ninja appeared beside him. You, said Kakashi. You're the one that took the demon brothers. He could not see him too well earlier but now he could see. Those red eyes. He was wearing a camo clothing. Yes, I am. My name is Deku. And would you all be so kind as to leave Wave Country? Why should we leave? That is none of your business. I shall only say this once more. Leave Wave Country and leave Tazuna-san behind if he wishes to stay. Technically, Tazuna-san is our client and we cannot be guaranteed of his safety if we leave him. Which leave the option of force, Deku said as he looked towards Zabuza. You handle the other Jonin while I deal with Kakashi. You six stay here and guard Tazuna, Kakashi said as the mist started to gather around them rather thickly. A wave of killer intent washed down on the Jennings as they were all trembling in fear. Sasuke thought about just ending it but Kakashi words snapped him out of it. Don't worry, I'll protect you all he said as him and Asma were swallowed in the mist. Do not make empty promises Kakashi said. As Deku lashed out with a powerful kick Kakashi tried to block. He did but he winced in pain as he felt the blow. They started to clash. It followed with Deku delivering a powerful uppercut. However, Kakashi poofed away, releasing water. A water clone. Deku ducked under a brutal kick from the reappearing Kakashi as he rolled away. Kakashi was upon him in a second. Kakashi right leg met a solid stone stake as Deku had brought it out. The ninja leg clashing against it as it did not break. The two of them blur towards each other. As they start to lash out in a fast pace punch and kicks, blocks, and parry. Wind style, great breakthrough. Asuma used his wind style to blow away the mist. As Inu and the others were in shock. Whoa. As they saw the fast pace combat of the two ninjas in front of them. Deku did not move like he had a spine. Shikamaru noticed because the way he twists and turns his body and he leap over some strikes that he should not be able to leap over in the position that he was in. He did not seem to be all human. Kakashi thrust his kunai but Deku wrapped his right arm over it and slammed a kick into his chest, throwing the copper ninja away. I had to limit my speed to Jonin level for you and I have to say, I am very impressed Kakashi-san. Kakashi grunted as he got to his feet. Thank you but I take it that is not the fastest you can go. You are correct. As another stake came out of his left arm. Now stop holding back. Over on the other side, Asuma was holding his own against Zabuza. Oftenly, as he glanced over towards his fellow Jonin between attacks, 
as he was clashing with both of his trench knife against a massive cleaver blade. As Osama jumped back, fire release, ash pile burning, as he blew out smoke ash that surrounded Zabuza. Once it did, he clicked his teeth together and boom! The resounding explosion wave passed him and hit Deku who had just elbowed Kakashi away as the creation was knocked right into the water as well as the copy ninja. Deku recovered in a second as he stood on top of the water and trapped Kakashi in a water prison. Zabuza who thought he can hold out by holding his breath inside the ash was blasted out by the explosion as he was thrown in the forest. However, Haku caught him. His body was severely burned, his breath was short and labored. His critical condition forced the ice user to knock him out and focus all his attention on him, forgetting about his boss who was still battling with the other Kanoha ninjas. Hold on Kakashi, I'm coming, Asuma yelled out as he dropped on top of the water. As he shouted out his next technique, flying swallow, he said. The edges of his knife start to hum as it elongated with wind chalker. Deku created clones, water clones without even weaving, hand sign as they blur forward, not hesitating in the slightest. Asuma slash and stab at the clones. Water clones are known to have only 20% off. The original strength, Asuma was able to slice and tear them to ribbons. As he was getting closer and closer, it's here dripping water from him being splashed several times. Deku hoped that his chakra battery had enough as he created stakes and fired them towards Asuma. He had to stay where he was to keep Kakashi inside. Asuma cursed as they were coming faster and faster. He was gonna get skewered until Sasuke seemed to answer his unasked prayer and launch a demon wind shuriken forward. As Sasuke had enough of watching him fight and doing nothing against Shikamaru protest he launched the demon wind shuriken towards Deku. Deku turned and fired a stake as he broke the shuriken into pieces. As Asuma saw his opening, he threw one of his trench knife at the precise moment, still coated with wind chakra right towards Deku. Deku had no choice but to leap up in the air as Kakashi escaped from his prison. Kakashi leaped over towards Asuma thanking the man as the both of them took up stance in front of Deku who landed back on the water on the opposite side. He looked at the both of them before. He started to blur through hand signs as the Jonins did the same. Wind style, great wind breakthrough, water style, great waterfall technique, water style, great waterfall technique. It was a wind technique that attacked first followed closely by Kakashi water attack and then Deku. Water attack. The wind technique smash at deck water attack as it weakened it. And then Kakashi water technique smash right through. Ramming into the wide eye Deku. The dark creation regained his footing as he felt his body already tapping into his battery store. As the water settled back down, fire style, flaming dragon bullet. As he started to spit bullets of flames towards them. How much chakra does this guy have, Kakashi thought, exhausted as he and Asuma tried to outrun the fire bullets as they smashed into the water. I don't know, but you won't last for long, Asuma said, as he used his trench knife to slash away at the fire bullet as he slashed at Deku when he got close. However, Deku leaped away, stopping his attack, as Deku could feel his battery store emptying, until a winged jutsu hit his arm. For the first time since his creation, Deku felt pain as the blade had passed right through the tubes that supply chakra to his arm, but not far enough to cut it off completely. He stepped away from the lethal knives. In a burst of chakra, he appeared in Asuma's guard and kicked him in the chest, knocking him away. The moment Kakashi got out of the water, he too was blasted in the chest area, throwing the both of them away. Deku turned a glare towards the Kanoha ninjas before he blurred away into the forest. Kakashi and Asuma sighed in relief. As Asuma looked over before, he saw Kakashi. Kakashi? Kakashi fell over. Sensei Sakura yelled. Time skip Kanoha. As Naruto lightly glare at the letter that he received a day after he had sent the Dark One on his mission. So, 
They got past you, Deku, he thought to himself. It was inevitable that you saw your limit. As he pumped more chakra into the egg seal, so much that it fill. The clawed creation in the wave, and almost fill the batcher seal as well. He neatly folded the letter as he placed it into the arm of his chair. He then tapped the right of the chair as it lifted off the ground and hovered toward the tree. His special place, the same place that he come to relax, the same place that he had met Hinata. He cut off the wind chakra as the chair touched down. He now understood why the egg seal tingled. Without his loyal Christian around, it meant that Deku was in need of chakra. The water clone that delivered the letter looked barely alive and dispelled. Right after he delivered the letter, the shadow clones that were here dispel as he sent the excess chakra back to their boss. There is not any clones to guard him, but he did not need them yet. Quite frankly though, he was surprised that a seal creation stood up so well against two A-rank Jonins who had their names in the bingo book and had a reputation outside the village about their skills. He was proud. Yes, extremely so. He already started to go through plans in his head on how he would improve Deku's skills as he unsealed an empty scroll as he started to scribble down a training regime for his creation. The right arm of his wheelchair tingled three times, alerting him. A minute later he saw four pair of eyes, well, three pair of eyes and a dark glasses looking at him as they watched him from the distance as they were hiding behind the bush. He ignored them for now as he wrote in the scroll, mentally, reminding himself to send it later. As the sun was now setting, as there was quiet, as Naruto simply relaxed, until Kiba shouted out, I don't know what you're freaking about Hinata. He can't even walk. As he stomped out of the bushes, Kiba-kun, the flustered Hinata called out, as she tried to pull him back but he pulled his arm away and made his way forward, his Ninken right behind him. As she now remained quiet as he briefly walked out and stopped beside Hinata, watching. Hey Blondie, what's up with you? Kiba asked as he crossed his arms. For a moment Naruto said nothing to him. As he just looked at the boy, he then spoke. I don't know what you mean. I mean, what are you doing to mess up Hinata? Kiba growled as he took a step forward, trying to intimidate Naruto but... Naruto was not intimidated in the slightest. I only met your teammate yesterday. I don't know how I could mess her up. Only after one meeting, said Naruto. Oh, so you do admit that you can mess her up, Kiba said. Naruto shrugged. Maybe. But I'm not in the mood for your accusations. Please leave. Kiba stomped over as he poked him on the forehead. Yeah? And what are you going to do about it, he asked. Kiba. The calm voice of Shino said. I know what I'm doing Shino, Kiba barked back over his shoulder. As he faced Naruto once again and poked him on the forehead. So, what you gonna do about it Blondie? I'm warning you. He was cut off by another poke. As Naruto could not get to finish what he was about to say. Shino bugs start to buzz loudly. Making him take a step back. As he pulled Hinata back as well. Akamar also saw the danger as he whimpered and hid behind Chino as Naruto tapped the seal on the left arm of his chair. A dome of wind shot out and slammed right into the Inuzaka. Naruto tapped the left side this time. Another seal shot a rope forward and wrapped around Kiba's throat. Kiba claw at the rope, however Naruto pressed the seal and it dragged him through the ground, bringing him towards him. He was cursing and gurgling as Naruto unsealed a stick from his trusty chair. Do you know what I'm going to do with this? Kiba whimpered as he tried to pull away. Correct. I'm going to beat some sense into you. As Naruto whacked him on the head. Apologize. Whack. Apologize. Whack. Apologize. Whack. He kept on slamming the stick down on his head. For the love of all things bright and beautiful. Kiba. Just apologize. Shino yell. Is Hive on the verge of rebelling. As Hinata was shocked, how Naruto defend himself easily? You should listen to their advice before. I pull out my metal stick, said Naruto. Last chance, fine, Kiba grunted. I, 
I'm sorry. Now let me go, he said, rubbing his head. Say please. Please. As Naruto tapped the seal, the rope, seemed like it had a mind of its own as it unraveled from Kiba's neck and returned back to Naruto's chair. He tapped it once again as a blast of air. Blast Kiba away. Good. Now I don't want to see any of you here again. Now leave. Hinata ran to Kiba and helped him up as the three Jennings ran away from the clearing. Before Hinata left, she turned to apologize as she mouthed the words but Naruto was not looking. She tried to cover her disappointment as she left with Kiba. Not too long after that, a dozen Deku clones arrived. As they all bowed, the one at the front spoke. We are sorry for our late arrival, Naruto-sama. Do not worry about it. It was a nice exercise, said Naruto, as he sealed away the stick. Any news, he asked. Yes, the Jonins are still recovering from the fight. And they're training their Jonins in case the boss attack ever again. I don't care what they do. As long as they don't snoop in my business, they can stay. I mean about Wave. The town hall has been fully restored. And the Daimyo Palace has been fully fortified. It's ready for you when you're ready to come. Whenever you want. Working on the walls is underway. The boss is already placed in the seals. And he says that it will be finished in a few weeks. The barn has already been filled. And the masses has already been fed so the rices. Price are lower. The first ship has already been finished. And we are currently exporting half of the farm products. To the hidden waterfall village. They are still skeptical about our trading alliance, but they're not putting up any sort of fuss. The head of that village has scheduled a meeting with the boss in precisely two months. The same day Kanoha will be holding their chun exams to see if there's any way that there is to extend the alliance. The bridge is being built and the Kanoha ninjas are still suspicious of the land of wave. Good, said Naruto. As he unsealed a letter and handed it to his speaking water clone, take that back to your boss and tell him to study it all. The clone saluted as it made it way. He then turned towards another clone. I want you to go to the forbidden section of the library and copy the security seal if there is any and bring it back to me at my apartment so I can give you the counter seal and go back with three other copies to copy as much scroll as possible. The clone saluted and ran off to the library. You, said Naruto, I'm hungry. Go and get me some ramen, the legal way. The clone bowed and went off to perform his duty. The rest of you are to escort me home, said Naruto. His security detail marched around him as he hovered to his apartment. It was totally dark but the clone navigated the chair guide towards the right path. As his mind was busy thinking about a lot, there was a lot that he had to do. A lot of plans for the future. Yes, so much planning, he thought to himself. Time skip. Two months later, the dark creation made his way calmly down to the docks of the land of wave. He was wearing a maroon color, leader robe, with a new symbol for wave spread on the back. It was a circle with four wave lines inside of it. He also wore dark glasses that hide his red eyes. Under the robes he wore his combat clothing. His red eyes looked over towards the sailors that were loading the rice on the boats. The ones who saw him bow politely as he nodded to their greetings. As he walked up the boardwalk and proceeded to the captain quarters, he knocked on the door as the other person told him to enter as he entered. The ship captain stood as he bowed low. Deku-sama, he said, please, sir, take a seat. As Deku sat in the chair and leaned back, are you here for the report, Deku-sama? Yes. This is a fourth shipment to Waterfall Village. And I've seen the profits for myself. But I want to know if there's any problems. Pirates. Scourge. Pests. Deku asks. The only problem I can report is there was a minor leak in the ship. But it was patched up soon after. The ship is clean and the crew are screened for any prior disease before they are allowed to board. Good. There were three ships which main function was to export rice to waterfall and three more to import the profit and clothes material from waterfall 
Battleland of Wraith. There was also a ship that Naruto assigned to be made. It was to bring and take Taurus in and out. So far there was just some tourists from Waterfall. They were curious about the growing country that they allied themselves with. It was more like a luxury cruise that was still developing. Wave had come a long way since. They were liberated six months ago. The walls had been constructed and so far they had captured numerous Konoha ninjas that came to spy on them. They were set free after being warned. But the hidden leaf was getting persistent. Naruto had written a formal letter to the Hokage as the leader of Wave a day ago, requesting the Hokage to stop sending spies, and so far none had shown up. There was a fledgling ninja and civilian academy that was fully managed by transformed Deku clones so they wouldn't intimidate the students. The clones were teaching what they had memorized according to the students' level. There was a library that was fully stocked with all the memorized scrolls and a forbidden section as well that held new to custom seals and S-rank jutsus. There was a teacher school for those who want to teach in the ninja academy and one for the civilian academy as well. They will release their first generations of ninja in about a year. Wave was not in dire need of defense. Naruto's seals were extremely strong but the growing country was in need of the money from missions. There were many farms dotted outside the wall. The seals cast a dome around them which alert them if it was being breached. Anyone that was unfamiliar that the seal was not made to acknowledge as the residents that came and go outside had keypads that were key to their blood which means if it was ever stolen by a foreigner and they tried to use it to get in, the backlash would be very unpleasant. The residents were to slide the key card over a small seal matrix on the wall and it would ripple open. It was a mix between Funjutsu and Genjutsu. The water life was still recovering in a few months. Fishing season could start. Deku nodded as he left the room. He glanced up towards the sun and smirked when he saw the tourist ship. As it docked, he made his way forward to greet the visitors and there was a very important man on that ship. As he greeted, welcome to wave country, Shibuki Dano. The current leader of Waterfall smiled at the other village leader and shook Deku, outstretched arm. Thank you Deku Dano, he said. I hope your journey here was pleasant, Deku commented as he released the man hand. His two guards stood behind him protectively. And Deku noticed a mint here girl peeping from behind his back. The service was excellent and the water was calm. Thank you for asking. I assume that you wish to speak about our alliance. The hotels are still under construction, but you are welcome to stay at the tower. Before we go, I would like to introduce you to some people. First, this is Fu, as he pushed her forward. We shall discuss more about her later. The next person is Samseto, Lujo. Head of the Hidden Fang Village. Sam Sato wore a thick leather vest and pants with fur on the shoulder pads and fur on his hood as well. He was wearing thick tan boots that had noticeable fang blades jetting out of the top. The man scowled as he stomped down two Jonins of the Fang Ninjas marching after him. Welcome to Wave Country, Sam Sato Dano. Thank you for receiving me, Deku Dano. The fan country leader grunted. Deku knew his type. Tough as nail on the outside and soft as cotton on the inside. His suspicions were confirmed when the feral man smirked at him as he took his hand in a firm handshake. As Deku turned to Shibuki and calmly whispered, I thought we only agreed for you to come. Yes, we did agree but I wish to bring up the matter with others allied to my country. Please do not be offended. On the contrary, if what if aid is making my country stronger, more the merrier, Deku said. Shibuki gave a bow as he continued his presentation. Next is the leader of the village, hidden in the marsh, to Rensuke. The person to walk down was a woman, in a knee-length battle kimono, a green one. Silver thread was on the edges of the kimono. Her hair was tied in two buns, and there was a tattoo of a mongoose on her left arm. From her shoulder to her wrist. Now that was a bit strange because mongoose did not reside in those swampy areas. 
The woman sent him a two finger wave as she came down. As Deku held his hand out for a handshake but she hugged him. After a half a minute of a bit of awkwardness they gave each other another respect. Welcome to Wave Country, Tudano, Deku said. It's a pleasure to be here Deku Dano. The next is the leader of the village hidden by the chill, Yumi Cho, a slender woman with pale white skin that went well with her white parka. A knee-length brown dress underneath, she had furry, white boots on her feet. Her hair was a flowing blonde as she extended her hand in a motion for Deku to kiss but he took it and shook it, making her frown. Her guards behind her stifled her laughter behind their hoodies. Welcome to my country Yumi Dano. The woman clenched his hand firmly making him smirk behind the strength behind the hole. Thank you oh so much Deku Dano she said as she smiled warmly showing off that ice queen persona of hers. Last but definitely not least is the leader of the smoking village Jinzuki Kitsuen. The next person to come out was a large man. He was wearing an open grey robe that exposed his robust belly. He was wearing red sleek pants with a rainbow sash around his waist keeping it together as he had a cigarette in his mouth smoking. He had a fat nose, pupilless black eyes. He was light skinned and very healthy. As he grinned widely, as he brought the dark one into a bone crushing hug, his two guards behind him were in helmets. Welcome to Wave Country, Kitsu and Dano, Deku said, as he slid out of the man's hole as he straightened his robes. The man breathed out some smoke. Wonderful to be here, he said, as he patted Deku on the shoulder friendly, as there was some force behind it. I am glad. Now if you all don't mind, let's proceed to my place. So you can rest up and we can discuss. Discussion tomorrow. As the ship crew was running around behind them getting the vessel ready. For their next trip. One of each guards returned back to the ship to get their leader luggage. Deku was honestly happy that one of the first places to be finished was the Daimyo's mansion as it had made Naruto liking and there was plenty of housing inside. The wallpapers were soothing and the paintings were rather calming. They had the room set apart for special individuals that wanted to visit because the hotels were not yet finished. There were also places for the servants to stay at, so the service will be extremely fast. The next day, we find all of the village leaders in the Wave Town Hall in the meeting room. The table was rectangular with Deku sitting at the head, the leader of the hidden village of the smoke, and Chill on his right, and March to his left, along with the waterfall as well. There was a large map on the table with their respective village highlighted. As Shibuki spoke up, with your permission Deku Dano, I would like to explain why I brought these wonderful people to your country. Deku nodded. For the man to proceed, my village has a rather unsavory history. The history tend to scave off potential allies. So if we have the opportunity to gain allies, even for a trading alliance, then we are very cautious. It was hidden smoke that first came to us seeking military aid and trading as well and we agreed. Then came hidden chill with the same and we also allied with them. Soon after hidden march and hidden fang came in as well and waterfall was blessed with four alliances. He paused to look at the occupants in the room to see if they had any disagreements. Please continue Shibuki Dano. Yumi the leader of hidden chill said. Waterfall was blessed with four beneficial alliance and as act of goodwill I schedule a meeting with all of the leaders to connect Waterfall Alliance. I see no reason why we smaller villages cannot stick together. With that he sat down as Kitsuen, the leader of Hidden Smoke spoke up. I see the logic in what you're saying Shibuki Dano. My village too has not had a good history with all the explosions setting off randomly. All those years ago, tourism and trading has reduced until Shibuki Dano was gracious enough to grant me and my people with trading alliance. Yumi coughed politely. I believe that all of our villages have not been seen in the most 
serious light. Chill has been isolated because of an epidemic that struck us years ago when there weren't too many healers. It took the life of our animals and some of our children as well. We have tackled it a while ago during my predecessor era and we are now free of it. Fang has also been struck with calamity. Our wolf went feral and killed a lot of people before help could arrive. Research has confirmed that it was a genjutsu after a wolf pup had been retrieved and interviewed. We do not know who caused it but it reduced our populace. We are still struggling to regain our power. My father was too strong headed to seek aid from our neighbors but I will not be that dim. Sam Sado said. March, quite frankly, is a name that put off most people from visiting. We also have a record number of floods. We have adapted to this and thrive. We sought out military alliance with waterfall because some of the ninjas under my command cannot adapt and fight above our natural terrain. We send them to waterfall to train and waterfall to send over their ninjas to get used to unfamiliar territory. Our village has greatly developed from the association and wave has been suffering under poverty and corruption until it was liberated Deku finish. Now it dawned on all the leaders except Shibuki why he wanted all of them to assemble. You wish for all of our village to come to a mutual agreement. Yes, he pointed at all the village on the map as it came out to a hexagon. I don't see why our village cannot ally with each other. I second that you may agreed. I agree it will benefit my village as well as all of yours. Sam Sato said. I as well agreed. Kitsuin said as he was excited about it. Hmm, why not? Tu said as she leaned back and crossed her legs. Then it is settled. Our villages shall form an alliance. Let us iron out the details shall we? Said Shibuki as Deku unsealed a large empty scroll. As he brought out the brush, however, he momentarily freeze. Is there a problem, Deku Dano? Yes, a minor one. Depends on how you all look at it. What I'm about to tell you is in strict confidence. A show of trust. To foster a sense of camaraderie between our new allies. I can only ask that you understand. As Tu was the first one to speak. Don't just keep us in suspense. You are free to speak. I am not the true leader of the Land of Wave. This must be some kind of joke. If you are not the true leader then why do all the people refer to you as Leader Sama? Sam Sado said with a snort. This is difficult to explain but I am the right hand man of the true leader of Wave. He was the one that commanded me to liberate and take over this country. He is currently dealing with some things in his home village but he trusted me to lead until he arrives. He was the one to plan out everything and draw out all the specialized seals that I am sure you saw during your stay. I am his enforcer and his protector. Let's say we do believe you. Who is this true leader you speak about? Kitsuin said stone face. As he was ready in case all hell break loose. His name is Naruto Uzumaki and he's on his way here as we speak. He has a problem with movement but I assure you he's not one to be taken lightly. The door opened up as Naruto sitting was being pushed by a Deku water clone although he did not need to be pushed by him. Welcome Naruto sama. Him? He's just a kid. He can't even walk Yumi said. Deku took off his glasses his red eyes locking towards her with a glare. Stand down Deku. Naruto said. As he took control over his hovering wheelchair, Deku pushed his chair aside as Naruto settled down right there. Pardon my intrusion, he said as he coughed in his hand. Those were the exact words Akanoha Ninja said to me before he disappeared, he said. As the guards and the leaders looked at him. Was that a threat, Yumi asked as she stood up. As Naruto had to raise his hand for his dark half to calm down. I assure you it was not a threat. I am simply reminding you of a core lesson taught by all ninjas before and after they exit the academy. Never underestimate the unknown. She sat down and crossed her arms. I was not meant to reveal my identity for a while. 
but I want to make sure Waterfall personally agree to our alliance. But now I'm happy I came. My village, or country is about to be allied to four more villages. The potential benefits, my village, Wave, and all of your countries will benefit from this alliance is too great. It was an act of confidence, like my servant said, and I trust you all to think logically before you throw away this one chance of a great opportunity. He sure doesn't talk like a child. Shibuki said to himself, Could you please explain how you orchestrate deliberation and control over this country? Naruto Dano, Shibuki said. I have no reason to hide that information. As he told them, his breakthrough in seals and how he extracted his dark half instead of the Kayube. How he trained Deku until he was able to take on two a rank ninjas for a while. He further proved his controlling Funjutsu by standing and walking around the room. Walking for too long takes a toll on me. That is why I prefer to use my wheelchair. Simply amazing. Two whispered. And your wheelchair is without wheels. Because it's been fully powered by seals. Yes, it was one of my recent work. I will gladly share what I can with you all if you so desire. But we first must come to our agreement, said Naruto. As Shibuki looked towards the others who nodded, I think we can all proceed with the alliance. Before we begin though, please, could you tell me how you were able to get out of Kanoha, surely? They would have a 24 watch on you. I timed the transfer perfectly and swap with a clone of Deku. I then had to walk out of the gates until I was a few miles away. And then another Deku clone escorted me here. I can assure you, the clone is very good at imitating me. Now with that aside, let's lay out the agreement shall we? Said Naruto as he looked towards the members. But guys, it'll be in subscribe right here. If you want to see the next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I need a fourth them which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Don't forget to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So without further ado or wasting more time, what do you say we jump right out of here? See you guys soon. Peace.